Sarah here from Guardian Cane Corsos and Holy Moly Birds. It seems they're flying. I don't know. I don't know which directions would shut this house yet, but that had been going on for five minutes. So I was like, you know what? I may as well take a photo and uh, share it with you guys. Um, <clears throat> I'm still not going to appear on camera because we still don't have much water. Oh, here's more. Um, we did fix our water softener, so things are getting better, but, you know, we just don't have, um, our water still smells really yucky, so it's really hard for us to shower in it and brush our teeth, but I do know we did get a uh, hard water uh, removal system for the whole house so between the softener and everything else um, we should be able to get that up and running so once I install that I'll definitely share with you guys this is blooming in pretty much November we have some flowers More birds. But, um, what are you doing, Chevy? Just wanted to give you guys a little update. It's looking a lot more like fall around here. Um, we are getting the hang of things. We are feeling a little more settled. Um, this is probably the last day I can be outside without a winter jacket. Um, but we've had to so many birds we've had to um, really make some tough decisions because um, originally the dogs were going to be in our basement which has a walkout here and I'll actually go and show you guys the house looks a lot bigger on the outside because everyone's like oh this is a nice big house and then they come inside and you know it's not <laughs> so and i sorry i'm so slow but we're down to the last few weeks of pregnancy here so <laughs> but this i assume in the olden days was kind of like one of those cellar access points that they turned into a covered area to protect it from the elements. Um, and sometimes moths fly at me, at me here, which I don't like. No moths today. The Chevy's learning to be brave, but I'm not sure if you can see much down there, but it's a very steep stairs, okay, from the 1800s. I think that's the original stone of the house, but this is not what I would consider good living quarters for a dog with dysplasia like Logan has. Even though his is mild, I'm not trying to put it into something that's moderate or severe. So. You know, there's also a weird door there and, um, you know, to get a custom door made with the supply chain logistics to, I guess, demo that stairs, pull this out um, and make a ramp. We figured a few thousand dollars, but uh, we didn't figure it'd be like you know, thirteen to twenty thousand dollars. So we're not financially in a place to do that um, right now. So this no longer became an option for us to keep the dogs at, um, which really sucks. 
um, but it is what it is. So uh, the basement is not going to be used right now um, until we likely do a major renovation to the home. I still don't know where all the things are, like the septic tank, is it in here, is it over there, you know, I'm just not sure. Um, but we decided to put the dogs um, in kennels in the garage. Now we have our cats in the garage and we have tried to keep them both in there. But, you know, that is not something that worked well because uh, Chevy got her face scratched up. And um, we have been working with a trainer who I highly regard. But um, we have been talking about my priorities and really making sure that... I can be a good home for these dogs. So that's why in my last video, I was really questioning, you know, what I'm going to do. Am I going to keep them? Am I going to um, send them to a better home? And got one hateful comment, but that's understandable. A lot of breeders rehome dogs, um, you know, when they can't produce. But as you know, my lines are canceled anyways, and we're not planning on breeding anytime soon. Um, if ever again at this point, I have a lot of things to consider, um, and lifestyles being one of them. So, um, when I got Phoenix and Logan, it was before we had kids. So things change, things happen. It's a good experience for me because I have a little bit more grace towards people that, you know, don't, don't basically, um, keep their dogs. But I think for us, it was just a situation where we still want Phoenix and we'd love to keep her, but we were presented with an opportunity where we had to decide what, what's best for Phoenix, not what's best for us. Um, <laughs> and all of us miss Phoenix, even my husband. Um, Logan especially, probably the most. You trimming my bushes? <laughs> so... I get it, but it is a touchy subject, and I do agree with people. I, I personally don't like when people get rid of their dogs, um, you know, because they're no longer breedable, but I promise you guys that's absolutely not what we did. I actually gave up my best dog. Um, Phoenix is my best dog. She had so much abilities. I would have been able to do work and titles with her. But again, when you have a baby, there's not much you can do for the first six months to a year. So I decided that, you know, given she's going to be five in a few months, that's at least halfway through her life. The average life of a Corso is eight to 12 years. You know, I think it's nine years to 10 years average. So She's already past her midway point, and why would I hold her back? So, you know, but, you know, again, not too phased because I totally agree with a lot of your comments. <laughs> You're just really going to work, bud. And my pooper scooper broke, so I just super glued it together, you know, so apologies if you see some poop. Um, but, yeah, we have decided to move these guys into the garage. And so I am going to have a fast follow-up video on setting up our kennels so you guys can see what we purchased. Um, I did a lot of research, probably too much, but 
Um, we did have one of the XSL Great Dane crates, which we really liked, except set up and moving it is a pain in the butt. Um, we pinched our hands quite a bit. I think between my husband and I, we've had a few cuts. And <laughs> when we took it down to move, my husband is like, please, I'm not moving with this thing. Get rid of it. So we donated it to our Georgia Training Club um, so that the corsos that are there, you know, have a, a large crate should any of the males be back there um, or other breeds needing, you know, one of those XS, XXL crates. So we moved without those. Um, I had the extra large crates, but Logan does not fit in those very comfortably. And I don't feel comfortable leaving him in there, you know, um, very often. And then um, we also have Jordan, who's our daughter. She's three. She's very, very into the dogs lately like I feel like I'm living in the jungle book she just wants to hug them sleep in the same bed as them and if you don't follow us on Instagram um, that's kind of where we post a lot more day to day so those of you who are on Instagram would have seen all the funny photos of her trying to be best friends with the dogs um, Logan out of there, bud. Good boy. And so, given the small space we have, um, and all the people that are going to be coming over um, when the new baby comes to help that don't really know the dogs well, um, and if I have a C-section, which is what the odds are for me, again, um... I can't be near the dogs either. So my trainer was very wise in saying that, you know, we need to pre prep a plan for the dogs now and see how they react to it to make sure that they're calm and comfortable when we're going through the stress of the new baby's arrival. So that's why we set up kennels. And the first week is really, really hard for me. Um, <laughs> I humanize dogs I've gotten a lot better but I still humanize and so part of me is like you know a dog shouldn't be in a crate for most of the day they should be outside moving around um but you know if you look at people who work their dogs and have really well behaved dogs they do spend a lot of time in the crate so it's probably taken me I would say it's taken me my entire time researching and having the dogs to get to this point to let go of, you know, my dogs need a comfortable life and this, this and that to realize that they are dogs. And yes, we want to give them the best life possible, um, but we have to be also realistic that the number one thing a dog needs is consistency, boundaries, and clear communication, which we have failed miserably at, um, even by working with trainers and various groups. Um, have I learned a lot and come a long way? Absolutely. But you ask anyone who owns dogs and they will tell you, what are you doing, Logan? That... You never stop learning. Every dog teaches you something. So I've gotten to a place where I'm open to trying out new things and um, very curious to see how this goes. So we've had them in the crate overnight last night, not in the crate, in the kennels, and uh, they did fine. I have my camera on them so I can keep an eye on them and we are letting them out three times a day and it is not something that's normal per se what we're doing but we're being realistic when the baby comes they're not going to have a lot of attention for a couple weeks it's going to be you know you're in your kennel you come out to potty and you go back away so we're seeing how they do if they need 
any work on anything, if they'll be able to handle that. So they can be set up for success when I am not able to work with them for a few weeks. So it's a challenge, but you know, what do you see love? I never know if, if she's teasing Logan for his bone or if there is a coyote or a deer coming out. But I don't think we have much predators on this land. Really just coyote, deer, and small prey. But Chevy's prey drive is pretty high. Higher than I thought. So yeah, we are working with the dogs this week. It will be really hard. I will try and do some videos because I think all of us, you know, pet owners anyways, um, humanize our dogs. You got your other bone, love? All right. We humanize these dogs and, um, you know, it is what it is. We think that they... We feel bad if they're not all allowed on the couch or on our beds, you know. Um, and we feel bad if they're not getting enough exercise for the day. Um, but I think we overdo what a dog really needs. A dog needs, again, consistency boundaries and clear communication first and foremost so by keeping our dogs crated um we're gonna start from scratch and basically have them learn that their job is to relax is to um, be okay with themselves and um be okay with little entertainment and we noticed that having them even in the house for the first month you know just so that they could get comfortable um and we could figure out a plan caused um a lot of our stuff to actually get damaged like these guys haven't destroyed anything because they haven't really had the opportunity to in the last couple years because they've had a dog area you know and um every day something would be destroyed and even if we made sure that all the baby's toys were up and everything was cleared away, you know, they would start chewing on the couch cover. And that's when they had full stimulation and um, were with us or going for jogs outside and everything they needed. So they, you know, some people say a bored dog will cause trouble, but we're not in a season of our lives where we can do much more than that. So we have to teach our dogs that it's not okay to do that. They have to learn to be content with what we're able to provide. And so that's why I had the real struggle last time was, am I really the best home for these guys? Would they be better off somewhere else? Um, so that's what we're evaluating. Uh, can my dogs be happy with what we can do in this season? So it'll be very interesting. I love learning about training, communication. And a lot of times when we have our dogs as pets, we don't realize the amount of rules that there is that they need to learn and follow. And oftentimes we haven't taught them all those things. So I know this has been a really long video, but... I wanted to share with you kind of all the things that I've been learning and this kind of goes against a lot of stuff that I said before because I've always thought dogs are better off in your home, not in a kennel. Um, so this is really hard for me to try. It's not really something I naturally believe in. I'm more of the tendency that a dog should be in the house um, unless you're somebody who obviously is very ex you know an expert in the breed and you can really contribute to genetics and producing a better standard then yeah I totally support kennels 
Um, but these guys are really close. Um, and we do hope to spend a lot more time with them as soon as we can evaluate um, how they will react when we will be busy for those couple weeks. Another good thing about these types of exercises is if you go away, you know, will anyone watch your dogs the way that you care for your dogs? If you do, you're very lucky. Um, if you have to board your dogs, they have to be used to um, times when they have to be sedentary and calm and okay with themselves. Logan, you got bleeding gums, man. So it's very, very hard. Um, this week, we're not giving them anything in their kennels. Normally, I'm a huge person of give them bones, activities, you know, but that's just, again, me trying to find ways to do the work for the dog instead of the dog having to choose to do the right thing. I hope this makes some sense to you guys. I am so sorry it's so long. Um, but you'll see another video come out very soon if you're interested in um, our kennel build unboxing um, because we just did that research. So, you know, um, I will have that up for you guys. And then as soon as I get my water system figured out here, we'll do a video. I did some water testing. Um, very, very interesting results. Um, but you know, because we have a baby on the way, a toddler, lots of animals, we wanted to make sure that, oh man, what is that? Oh, yeah, that's a huge buck. You saw it, Chevy, eh? I'm not able to get it on camera. Is it going to come? I thought of there's a huge one. Let me see. It's crossing the road. No. You can see it. Oh god. Okay, so now it is on our land. Doubt it will come out, but <laughs> never a dull moment, eh? Almost caused an accident there, and that was a big male deer, duck, buck. I'm learning all of these things. I'm gonna see if my husband will um, be hunting this season. Because if he does, we'll be able to fill our deep freezer and start filling, feeding raw. Um, which is something I know that's taken us forever. But we're all set up now for what we need. Um, and uh, I forgot what I was saying, but... Yeah, sorry this is a long video. But I wanted to... What do you guys see now? Anything? You take Logan's Chevy. Where's your bone, Logan?
but we're doing good. We're hanging in there. Um, Logan, come get yours here. Um, but yeah, I will be posting a video of the kennels soon, so stay tuned for that if you are interested ever in having kennels versus crates. Um, and we'll be back. I think what I was saying was we'll be back with the water video. Um, so lots of videos hopefully coming up eventually as we get more and more settled until the baby comes. All right. Hope you guys are staying well and stay blessed and staying safe until next time. Thank you guys.